Hello and welcome to another video tutorial from ComputerGuardGuard.com. This tutorial will look at two date and time functions. They are known as eDate and EOMonth. And these functions are used to calculate a date, a specified number of months before or after a start date. Now let's begin with the eDate function. Now what we'd like to do is we have a column of dates here. Now we can pretend that these are dates that some kind of qualification was taken or, or maybe some kind of license. Uh, this sort of idea it has been completed. Uh, it needs to be completed maybe every three months, every six months, this kind of idea. So every time it's completed we want to automatically calculate when the next one is due. Um, and in talking Excel for a moment we can always use the likes of conditional formatting uh, to alert us when that date is, is coming close. But first of all, we need to be able to calculate the date. I don't want it to be automatic. I don't want someone to have to manually be able to put these in themselves. Now the eDate function, if I write this in column B here, equals eDate. As it tells me, it returns a, a date that is a specified number of months uh, before or after the start date. Let's say we want to date uh, six months after this license, this qualification, whatever it is. Uh, it needs to be taken again within six months. So I'll put an opening bracket. E date will prompt me for the start date to begin with, which will be cell A2 in this case. And then how many months before or after the start date? So I could put things like minus three, three months before. You know, that kind of stuff can be used within the likes of conditional formatting, data validation, um, as well as restricting entry or, or warning of upcoming deadlines and dates. For us right now, I said we we're going to do six months, so I'll type in a positive six for after that date, close in bracket and enter, and we have the 3rd of October as opposed to the 3rd of April, and if I copy that down, we have six months for all of them. And that, if I change that heading from due, is the eDate function. Now we've also got the eOMonth, I've got to mention there. And the difference here is that eOMonth will return the last day of the month, a specified number of months before or after a start date. So using this same idea of that kind of license date, we want to calculate six months in front but we want the last day of that month. So it doesn't have to be the 3rd of October. In that case, it will be the, the 31st. If I have that right, I think there are 31 days in October. So let's have a look. Equals EO month. Returns the, the date that is the last day of the month before or after. What's that all about? A uh, specified number of months. Let's close in bracket. The start date is cell A2, again I'll choose A2, comma, how many months, it's going to be a positive 6, close in bracket, oh and we have, uh, we have a month in the incorrect form, there is your serial number, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's use our format painter tool to paint a short date format over the top of that. Maybe really I should have done it to these others just in case. But uh, when I copy this down, that should deal with that for me. I'm not sure why I wasted my time there. But here we go. So we have the last day of the month. There are 31 days in October. That puts me at ease there. Uh, 30th of November, 31st of December, 31st of January. What a 31 day month there. Uh, but now we've got one that calculates you know, th the same day of the month. Specify a number of months after or before a start date. I want that looks for the last day of the month. Two fantastic functions uh, to automate you know, this kind of scenario. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this tutorial useful. Uh, please check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel or at computerguardguard.com where we have hundreds more Excel tips and tricks and downloads. Bye for now.